Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair K70 Max. This is a new and updated version of the K70 with some really interesting highlights to it that includes not only the usual wonderful features like 8,000 hertz polling rate, 50 onboard profiles, 20 layers of RGB lighting, but also a number of hidden treats such as magnetic mechanical switches with an adjustable actuation point and dual actuation settings as well. I'm going to show you later on in this review. And as you can see, it looks pretty awesome from a number of different angles too. Other highlights that aren't immediately obvious on the surface include dual layer dampening foam to make it more satisfying to type on. And then obviously it also has PBT double shot keycaps and some pretty interesting accents along the top. You've got all the usual nice things as well, such as media playback buttons, volume wheel, and more. But the biggest highlight might well be these key switches. So they're magnetic mechanical switches, which is quite a bit different from the usual setup. And these are a linear actuation with 45 grams of actuation force and an actuation point that's adjustable in Corsair's IQ software, and I'll show you that later on, from 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters which means that you can either have a really light keystroke or a really heavy press, or you can choose between them on a key-by-key -key basis, which is pretty nuts. So I'm going to start by showing you what's included in the box, talk about all the features of it and what I like and don't like about it, and lots more besides. And then I'll show you various different ways that you can tweak it as well. So that's what's important. Now, included in there is a nice padded wrist rest with magnetic clips that just slips onto it. Pretty familiar design. The usual sort of nice padding there, comfortable on the wrists and obviously detachable in an easy way. It's not held in place with clips so it won't break, just slips on with magnets. When you get the K70 Max out of the box, I thought initially I don't really like the keycaps, if I'm honest. They are PBT double shot, but they are sort of a grey colour. It's not really obvious in the video, but they're kind of a dull grey versus the usual black and you've got a black keyboard, slightly gray keycaps, but it is a standard layout, so you can swap them out for your own, which I will be doing in a minute. On the underside, it does have adjustable feet, so you can tweak it and put it into the position you want. And then you'll see that you obviously have multiple buttons that you can access in various ways. There's profile button on the left side, for example, brightness button, windows lock, so you can put it into game mode, so it's ready for that. But you'll see how powerful the magnets are in the wrist rest, because you can basically move the keyboard around while holding it, and it doesn't pop off. It's got a subtle Corsair logo in the middle. The other thing is it's USB-C cable, and it's detachable, so you could use your own custom cable if you want to and that plugs in in the middle now there are a lot of familiar things about this k70 if you've tried or seen the previous k70 variants then you'll know what you're getting in some ways in that obviously detachable usb-c it also comes with some extra keycaps and a key puller so you've got a nice sort of textured interesting spacebar and escape key that you can alternatively swap out for and it also has a tournament button that i'll show you in a second now these are PBT double shot keycaps, which means they're thicker and designed to last and the extra ones aren't, so that's worth keeping that in mind. But you can see they have a sort of matte finish to them. The idea here is that the etching on the lettering will stay and won't rub off over time. They shouldn't get smooth uh, over a lot of use, so you should find this keyboard last and last, which is good because it's obviously expensive, but it's highlights like this which should prove it being worth its money. You can see the standard keycap setup has a nice glow in terms of the RGB lighting. So the lettering is pretty well done there that you can see through most of the keycaps pretty easily. And you've got some nice standard RGB lighting. You can layer it up to 20 layers, as I said, and then you can turn it up and down with this button here and adjust the brightness. And you can also flick it into tournament mode when you don't want to use it. So tournament mode basically disables the RGB lighting, so it's distraction free. And it, as default, it goes into red on the whole keyboard. And then you can obviously turn the brightness on and down still there. But you can also tweak that color if you want to and adjust that. But that key switch is at the back near the USB-C port. Most of these features are fairly standard on the previous models. But what's interesting is these key switches, which are obviously designed to give you a bit more flexibility in what you'll do with them. They are labeled as Corsair switches and they're magnetic mechanical switches, which are highly adjustable. Now, I've seen a Steel Series keyboard in the past, the Apex Pro, and that has adjustable key switches. So Corsair's kind of done a similar thing here 
where it's allowed you to adjust the actuation point, but also to set up a dual actuation level. So it's basically Corsair's mimicked Steel Series in that. So here's a little shot of that. Now I'm gonna leave a sound test of this keyboard at the end and a comparison with some others. But what I found was thanks to the dual layer of foam in there, that does sound a little bit nicer than the Steel Series keyboard. And it also sounds nicer than other Corsair keyboards that I've tried. So it's got a nicer thunk to it. It's not as pingy or as rattly as previous keyboards. So they're definitely improving the quality of them. That said, when I got it out and started typing on it and started using it, I did find still that it was quite noisy. It's not the quietest. I've certainly heard some nicer sound dampening. Now, another thing I wanted to show is the K70 OPEX. So this is the optical version in white. I'm going to be quiet now so you can hear the difference between those. you'll see that the K70 Max is quieter, quite a bit quieter and nicer to type on there as well. So again, stick around for a full sound test at the end in different ways. But here, look, you can see that you can control the RGB lighting with a function key and you've got hardware programmability in here. So you can press function key and then the numbers that light up. So you obviously get that extra layer lighting up to show you what's what. And you can change between the modes, speed it up and down again and adjust it. Now obviously you can also customize the lighting with an IQ and I'm going to show some of what you can do in IQ later on but I just wanted to demonstrate the hardware level of RGB here and you can see that some of that's quite nice. Now I did say I wasn't very struck with the keycaps and that sort of grey finish that you have on them but as you can see the lighting does look pretty good on it even under some pretty heavy video lighting so this wasn't taken at night this is during the day with lights on and it still looks pretty good so it is fairly bright it's not the brightest RGB I've seen but it is highly customizable because you can put layers on top customize and tweak that. I also really like the media playback ones these are a really nice addition just being able to play music skip pause and adjust volume up and down really easily there. There's a lot of premium features on this keyboard as there should be at this price point, And it is very nice for various different reasons. But one low light of the PBT double shot keycaps is that some of the lettering hides some of the RGB lighting. So you can see on the enter key, the E isn't perfectly visible, for example. That's one of the downsides. But one good thing is, because it's a standard layout, you can swap out your keycaps for others. So I did just that, made it look a bit funkier. Now I want to show you some of what you can do in IQ. So go into IQ and update the firmware, and then you can switch into 8,000 hertz polling rate. This will give you a more accurate response from it and faster response to your computer, but it can be taxing on your system. If you've got a high-end CPU, you don't need to worry about it. If you've got good system that should be fine but under the device settings you can see that you can also change some other things so we can adjust the tournament backlighting mode so that's that when you flick that switch it defaults to red you could change to something else like black so maybe you don't want any rgb lighting when you flick that switch on it's then just black and then you've got a much nicer view or you can personalize it to your own personal preference now i'm going to focus here on the key actuations because it's the most interesting thing as default it's around two mil as the actuation point, which is meant to be a good sort of middle ground between being nice for typing and being fast for gaming. As a pretty standard setup for most standard gaming switches is around two mil in terms of actuation. So this is the amount of distance, basically, the key has to travel before it actuates and sends the signal to your computer. But you can see that you can adjust it here across the entirety of the keyboard or on a key by key basis. So you can change it pretty easily, which is interesting, but more importantly, the secondary actuation point as well. So the thing I wanted to demonstrate is basically the standard typing, you know, you're pressing the button and you're getting a response out. You can see it in notepad here. If you adjust it so that it is less, so 0.4 millimeters as the actuation point, basically a very, very light touch. You don't need to press the key down. You just rest your finger on it essentially, and it will go. So this is obviously really good for gaming if you have a very low actuation because it's basically instant response. But for typing, not so much because you might accidentally type stuff you didn't mean to and that can be quite frustrating. The other way is if you're using it for typing, you go to 3.6 mil, you have to press that key a lot further before it actuates. 
So you can actually switch between these. The thing here that's cool though is you can set a secondary actuation point. So you could have one where it's the 0.4 millimeter and one where it's 3.6 or numbers in there between your choosing. And then you can use that to then set different actions based on that. So this makes this really flexible because you can choose specific keys and you can set an actuation level for them. So if we're gamers, we might set WASD as really low actuation, for example, so that we can move around really quickly while gaming. But maybe the rest of the keys just respond as they normally would when typing. And therefore, you can then customize it and personalize it. You can see you just drag on there or you can control click and select various keys and you can just go through and select everything you want to do and assign it the various different actuation points and then tweak it until your heart's content. Now, obviously, you could also set up different profiles for this. So you could have different profiles with different actuation levels on them and then switch between them using the hardware buttons or activate it depending on the game you're launching. So you can customize things in quite a few different ways here and obviously makes it very responsive. You will find that the very lowest point, 0.4 mil, just responds far too fast, though, for typing purposes. So if you find you're using it for productivity reasons and you're suddenly typing loads of letters that you didn't mean to, it's probably because your actuation point's a little bit too low. So opening up the secondary actuation point gives an interesting highlight in that you can program different things in. So if you do that first and then head over to the key assignments tab, you can then set up actions for some keys to do different things. So if you selected, for example, W as one of your double actuation levels, as I have, you can then set an extra action for it. So a standard my standard key press is going to be W, but then the second where I've pushed it all the way in is now including a space. The idea here is that basically a light keystroke makes me move forward, but if I press that W all the way in, it then makes my character jump. Now, this is just a random example that I came up with that I thought would be fun. You better walk around sort of casually, but then when you want to, you can jump without having to use space. Now, I know that might seem silly, but just think of the possibilities of what you could do and how you would tweak it. Obviously, you could also put macros in there or just extra keystrokes and other things. So if you're playing MMOs, RPGs, MOBAs maybe, those sorts of games where macros and multiple actions are handy, or if you want to be just a bit faster in games, then you can do that. So for another game I play, Ready or Not, which is a tactical sort of police shooter, F tells people to get down and put their hands up. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm actually assigning the secondary action where I push that F button all the way down to press my right mouse button. So what this does is if I press F, just tap it lightly, I tell people to put their hands up. If I push it all the way in, I'm then aiming down the sights of them as well. So the idea here is I give them a warning signal that they need to calm down and drop their weapon. And if they don't, then I can aim down the sights and shoot them with a beanbag shotgun. So they then have to put their hands up if, they've, if they're sensible or they get shot again. So these are just two random examples that I've come up with. Obviously, you could customize and personalize it, but you can see how it works here. So just a very light touch is enough to do that one action and then push it all the way and you can do the secondary action. This means that you could actually set up your keyboard so that you don't need to use your other hand. You don't need to use your mouse hand if you wanted to, or maybe just to optimize things and change them in a nice and interesting way. Now I want to show a sound test again between the standard K70 OPEX and the K70 Max. So stick around now to hear a sound test and let me know in the comments what you thought of this keyboard and subscribe if you haven't already, if you've enjoyed this or found it useful. Be sure to check out the links in the description to find out more. Thanks for watching.